All right, I thought I would make a quick little video about uh, downloading or uploading uploading uh, programs to these ESP32 modules here. Um, it's not as easy as you would hope. Um, I'm going to be using a CP2102, I think. Um, and then, uh, yeah, we'll get to that. So first things first, I'll show you my circuit. Um, my circuit looks kind of like this. I'm just going to show you the EN, IO, and uh, all that stuff. So EN basically just has, uh, it's a 10K to VCC and then a 0.1 microfarad ceramic capacitor. And then my reset button, which is right here, is uh, just kind of bridging past that. So that'll pull that pin to ground. Um, and whenever you're not, it's at like 3.2 volts, I think. For IO0, which is this button here, it just goes straight to ground. That thing can float, um, and it'll run just fine when it's floating, but we want to pull it to, to low to get it into the serial boot mode, and I'll show you that in a second here. RX and TX are just these pins here that I have, and then I have a ground pin. So basically what I've done is I have taken the CP2104, whatever, 2102 serial converter here, and uh, basically I just take TX and I go to RX of the board of the W room module and then I go RX and I go to TX on the, uh, on the board again. So again, TX goes to RX, RX goes to TX and vice versa. Um, that's really as simple as it is. Now, the hard part is you have to have a power supply capable of putting out quite a bit of power. Um, this one is a Syncone Electronics. It's a 3.3 volt uh, supply. Um, you want to make sure that these wires, like this is just a quick and dirty uh, prototype. So these normally would be on here, but I got the wrong ones. I'm going to use these HLK um, uh, 5M03s. I got to redo my board because I have it for the PM03. Surprisingly enough, they are different. Um, yeah, it helps to have a power LED on your board. Um, and let's see, I suppose I could. Yeah, that's just right here. It's just a 220 uh, ohm resistor to the LED and then back to ground. So, pretty simple. Um, now, again, this is just a prototype, but you need to have a power supply that's capable of putting out the amps and plenty of input capacitance. Right now I have 20 microfarads, so 210 microfarads, it's probably, could be more or less, who knows. Um, I haven't measured it, it doesn't matter. Um, and if you're gonna be, like for me, I'm running relays, you have to be careful, because your power needs to be enough to be able to supply the SP32 and the relays, um, or else it'll go into a brownout, which basically clears everything off of the chip and you gotta start over, you gotta replug it in and all that stuff. So um, just be aware of the input capacitance and your power. Um, if you're having issues, that's probably it. It'll just look like you can't connect to it, or even sometimes it will connect, it just uh, just fails in the download. Um, so let's go ahead and try this once. Um, We'll just try it. So basically you hit upload, wait for it to compile, wait for it to compile, wait for it to compile. And then you go, you'll hit and hold the boot button the whole time. And then you'll just hit the reset button once. You'll kind of hold it for a second and then release it. But you'll do it when it does, it'll show like these little dots. All right, here we go, uploading. See it says connecting with the little dots, we press hold for a second, release, and then it'll start writing, you, you're still holding the boot, oh, oh shoot, I only failed the course, let's try it again, see this is kind of what happens, I think I still need some more input capacitance, because this is what it was doing, it would just go fail, insta fail, okay here we go, again we hold, release, Holding this, 
could see that 4% or something like that. It's downloading. It's downloading. Still downloading. Come on now. Yep, yep. This will take a bit. Sometimes your fingers get a little tired from pushing down the buttons. Now if you had like a dev module, a lot of times they do it for you, like when I have a deal plugged into this guy, it does all this for me. I don't need to push the buttons. But here, there we go, hard resetting via RTS pin, so then we just remove power, which for me is unfortunately at the plug. Plug back in, and we're back. And we go here. And obviously, I don't, the program that I installed there isn't, it's trying to connect to the Wi-Fi, but because I don't want you guys to see my Wi-Fi, it's not working. Uh, anyways, so that's how you do it. Um, again, if you have issues, it's going to be on the input capacitance more than likely. These things take a lot of power. Um, when I'm running both relays, the coils on the relays, it's pulling, I think, 300 milliamps. So keep that in mind. I think normally it runs about 90 milliamps, between 70 and 90. But uh, yeah, just keep all that in mind, that you need a lot more input capacitance than you think you do. You think it might not be important because you see some tutorials out there saying that it isn't or that they don't use it or something. I don't know, but that's kind of what I saw and I was frustrated for a long time. Um, anyways, 